Hey y'all, so this week we are back with a Meta Horizon Worlds desktop editor video, and this one I wanted to cover the generative AI. I keep seeing comments about how good the Gen AI is in this. Those of you that watch my channel know that I just covered some Gen AI inside of Unity in their 6.2 release, so I figured it's only fair to jump back over here and give everyone a look at what is going on with Meta. So I've clicked on the generative AI button up here at the top. One important call out here that is just an unfortunate reality is based on your geographic location, you will or will not have access to this. Last that I checked, the regions that do have this are the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. Uh, if you are outside of those areas and you find that it works, please mention it in the comments below. Would love to know that there's more availability out there. But let's go ahead and get started. So the very first one, let's generate a 3D model. Generate custom 3D models of objects to add to your world. Fantastic. So it looks like it's giving us a prompt to try this out first. So of course this one feels a little gimmicky in that you're kind of locked on rails. So I'm hoping that right after this I can write my own prompt. But in the meantime, it's just showing us how the feature works. So a wooden treasure chest with a gold lock. Let's see how this generates. Okay, so we are now having some of these generate. It looks decent, but a little, a little janky. So the first one is a no-go for me. The second one is probably. The fourth one is no. And the third one is still loading. So I think as I see these, I really like this one here. It has some nice coins, has some nice detail on the outside, and it looks pretty clean. Whether or not this is curated, because it's forced me to do this prompt first, uh, to be determined. We'll take a look together. And this one also has some kind of muddy exterior. So I'm going to go with this top one. Go ahead and texture the model. And now we are moving through texture generation for this asset. I'll be curious how long this takes because generating 2D textures should not take nearly as long. And in knowing Meta Horizon World's system for texturing, it should only be, what, two maps? Uh, typically there's one map that handles things like base color um, and a few other channels. And then there's one other map on some types of materials. We've done a previous video on that that I'll put up in the corner, but the the texturing system is a little bit strange in that you have to name certain objects, certain things, and certain materials, certain things with certain suffixes in order for the engine to read it. So it feels kind of like an old school style of doing some texture features. But hopefully when this finishes loading out, it'll just give us everything with a bow tied up nicely on top. Okay, so it just finished generating. This looks pretty damn good to me. So let's go ahead and save it out. This process compared to the process of creating a 3D model in Blender and then getting all of the maps named correctly, then into Substance Painter painted and all the materials saved properly into the packed texture maps. This is a lot easier. Um, so I'll probably lean more heavily into this moving forward instead of trying to make my own stuff. All right, so now it has saved with the material and the asset. It looks pretty good. It's, it's a little ropey when you get closer into here. So I don't know what that process would look like to kind of hone this in, or if that's just the limitation of working with AI, is that you'd need to keep going until you get the right, right texture, right material, etc. Uh, but let's go ahead and keep moving forward. So for now, I just want to see what it what happens if I try to generate a mesh that I've come up with on my own. So let's say um, a mesh of a knight. A cartoon stylized knight character. Holding a pike. Let's make this really difficult. Riding a horse. I'm gonna say riding a war horse. Let's see what happens. I mean, this has gotta come up with something not great, but I wanna see.
Uh, I'm pretty shocked. I mean, this isn't a pike, it's a mace, but it's... Ooh, okay. I think this is the one that I want. But there's no way. I mean, th these have to be images that have been generated with AI, and now I'm trying to create a 3D model based on that. I'm holding my breath. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. Interesting. So I notice in just clicking the prompts that it's taking me through here that it's actually asked to create a textured model for the night character. So it's not just creating the model. It should be creating a finished asset with the textures applied. I also notice there's a thumbs up and a thumbs down system. So theoretically, I can be giving feedback to allow them to better train what they're doing. Most companies that I've seen using generative AI um, that are doing it in an ethical fashion are trying not to in any way leverage creator data unless it's uh, officially granted by the creator. So this is uh, likely a pretty easy way for their model to get feedback as far as this is good, this is bad, without needing to attempt to scrape or get any type of data from the end user. Um, okay, this looks... This looks good from the front. I'm I'm truly shocked that a 3D model is looking that close to the image reference. Let's let's pop it in and see what happens. Okay, selected my assets. Pull the night character in. Okay, so a few pieces that are wonky, like the uh, fist coming over into the center here. I might have given it a bit too much to handle between the horse, the pike, and the knight, but this is outrageously cool. And then let's say if I wanted to have this knight move forward over time, theoretically I could say write a script that will cause the asset this is applied to to move forward on the z-axis over time. Okay, and after this has been created and compiled, I then can see up in my scripts that I have a move forward script here. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is generate a sky, create a an otherworldly nighttime sky with planets and stars. And I want it to be in a sky dome. Okay, so now that we have this created, I like that fine. That is pretty damn cool. Save and apply. So the, the good and the bad of this, right, is that this looks good enough, but if it didn't quite look good enough, the process of fine-tuning this and getting it out of the editor and tweaking it in Photoshop would likely be pretty rough. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I'm over-expecting how hard that would be, but usually with these AI tools, you just have to keep tweaking until it's exactly what you want it to be. What I do like is that it allowed me to just apply the Sky Dome and save it out. I didn't have to go and find where the Sky Dome lives inside of the project and override it officially. So that's really nice here. Generate a texture. I'm just going to say generate um, cobblestone. Let's say wet cobblestone. Generating.
All right, so I'm going to grab this asset in here. And it says, in order to generate a texture, please select exactly one mesh in your world. So I'm hoping that it'll let me do it on this. So now that I have it selected, let's try to do this again. Wet cobblestone. I hope this is going to do it because this top one had this error pop up right after I tried to generate. So now let's try this. I'm also going to shrink myself just so I'm not so obnoxiously large down here in the corner. Okay, I don't hate it. So I'm in here, I'm going to save and apply the texture. It's not great, but it, it certainly could be worse. And this is where things get a little bit odd as far as the texture system and the ability to tweak textures after they're loaded in is I want to come in here and change a number of things, but it's a little bit limited, um, which I think is by design since all of this is meant to go out to web. But ideally, I would have some textures that are leveraging some more interesting uh, maps. Like I really would love to tweak a normal right now. But as is, I mean, it's good enough. It's good enough. So now let's come over here, find a five second sound effect. So let's say horse running. I'm going to generate that. That horse is not running. Uh, I need to turn on my desktop audio so that y'all can actually hear this. better. I think I like this one the most. So let's save that to asset library. I'm also going to take this, tile it down. That'll work for right now. I just want to see what this will look like as we work on it. So it doesn't auto tile on the textures either. That's okay. All right, so here's horses running. Let's drag that out into the scene. And I want to attach this to the knight character. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to loop it. I'm going to say play on start. We'll leave the volume where it's at. Let's move our night character over. Let's make sure our audio is directly over top of the night. And then we want some ambient. So I don't really need 120 seconds, but let's say 60. And we'll say... um. Towns, uh, let's say, lively village of towns, people enjoying a festival in a medieval time period. Let's see what pops up here. So the sound certainly generates fast. The scripting, of course, generates the fastest. The textures generate next fastest. And then the 3D models are the slowest, which is all to be expected, I would think. So let's move this treasure chest over here. See if I create an asset of the four of these, say calling that tiled floor. So now it's one singular entity. All right, let's check this out. It's not really exactly what I want, but we'll use it for now. 
just to uh, just finish this out. Save to asset library. So that's going to save out. And while that's saving out, I'm going to shrink myself and get back to our script. And I want to come down here in the bottom right, attach a script with the knight selected, and do move forward. Here we then have our speed that's part of the script that we created earlier. I'm going to make the speed 0.5. I'm going to make myself a bit larger here. And then now that we have the village enjoying itself, I'm going to pull this out. Play on start. And then I also want to pull the volume probably to 0.5. So now let's hit play and just see what this looks like. So our horse should be moving forward. We'll see if the scripts work or not. As someone who's not as adept with scripting, it could be that it doesn't work. And then I would need to troubleshoot. For the sake of this video, we'll call it good as is though. We have the audio that we've generated that is a VFX. We have the ambient audio that is the town. We have a 3D model that is our treasure chest, a 3D model that is our knight, both of those with generated textures. We have our generated texture floor with cobblestone. And lastly, we have our skybox. So let's hit play and see how this goes. This is pretty cool. So animation is not something that's in here as of right now. Uh, unsure if it will be at any point, but it's nice. There's even collision with the horse. So that was pretty damn cool. Uh, so all of these pieces, Assets, Sky, Textures, SFX, Ambient Sound, and TypeScript Generation. We've gotten through in a pretty short video here. I hope that y'all are as impressed as I am with it. The fact that all the, the scripting and all of that good stuff just kind of worked is pretty awesome. The only thing that's really tough is just if the generated pieces of this are not exactly as you intended, you can either regenerate and keep tweaking or you can try to modify it another way, but it gets a little bit laborious. So you need to, in my opinion, at this state of AI, you need to be able to be happy enough with, with as good as it's going to get in a quick amount of time. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself spending hours on trying to get something just right. However, if you spent a few hours on getting this model just right, I assure you that's less time than it would have taken you to model it. So Something to think about. I hope this video was helpful. You get in here and get to play with the generative AI features as well. As always, I hope y'all are having a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.